Welcome back. First of all, please settle down. I know you're all jealous of this awesome floral print blanket that I'm shooting on, but uh, you can't have it. It's, uh, it's mine. Actually, it's my wife's. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't find my American flag towel for the moment, but that's not what we're here to talk about. We are here to talk about... Uh, well, first, let me kind of back this up a little bit. I'm working on a project for an RV park, and we're doing, I'm doing all of the uh, RF analysis, all of the RF design for uh, them to sell Wi-Fi. And um, we've got two different types of wireless backhauls we're doing, and we're using these guys for security cameras. And so this is the Nanobeam M5. It's 5 gigahertz. It's an Air Max radio, high-performance CPE, so there'll be a central radio. Uh, and then there's four cameras out and about, all line of sight, all really good line of sight, less than uh, 1,000 feet away, but trenching cable is not an option for us. So we decided to go with these guys. We'll have to turn the radios way down. But in case you've never seen this, I want to show you this, and then we'll go into the software part of it. So what comes in the box? This is what really impressed me. Check it out. This, look at that, plastic still on it. This is the CPE. I don't know if you realize how small this is. I, mean, I can palm this thing. Um, let me see if I can get something for size comparison. Remember that edge router that I used the other day compared to the camera? So here's an edge router X. There's the CPE. This thing is tiny. And let's see. I believe this is a, yeah, it's got a 16 decibel. Yep, 16 dBi out of this little guy. Look at this. This is amazing. And you can see it's got the uh, polarity alignment. A little bubble here so right here you open this guy up there's your poe there's your reset and this is the the first time this thing's really been out of the box so what else comes in the box as always you get the awesome uh quick start guide pipe clamp poe injector power cord and you get this guy and I have never installed one of these so let's see oh by the way I know on a lot of ubiquity equipment you're used to plugging it in uh, on some of the stuff not so much with the edge routers uh, but some of the or a good chunk of the devices have a default IP if there's no DHCP server available well these guys are set static to that 192.168.1.20 so that is a static setting uh, it's worth worth noting but let's take a look at how do we so we've got this which they are calling the lock ring and this this is the lock ring this is the ball joint mount and then of course this is the nano beam and how do we install this guy? So it looks like we've got this guy facing this way, and we put it in like that. This is what it looks like. And then it looks like this uh, goes uh, on the back like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's some uh, clicking. Yeah. Oh, it's got this little thing there. Oh, and then... <sighs> nice. So then this guy is going to get mounted on a pole. You can mount it on the wall, but the wall mount kit is sold separately. It does not come with this this guy. So once again, 16 dBi. Look how tiny this thing is. I'm just, I don't know, ubiquity. You can call me a fanboy or whatever. They just continually impress me. So what we're going to do now is we're going to hook this guy up. He is passive PoE. So we're going to plug him right into our, our edge router. And we'll walk through the initial setup.
Okay, so we're back over at our configuration station. We are at the login for our edge router, so we're going to log in here. I've got this guy plugged into ETH1. So we got to come in here and we've got to turn on the PoE. We're going to turn on that low voltage. We're going to get this warning. We're going to say OK. We're going to save it. And we should see this thing power up 100 meg full duplex. Let's see what happens. There it is. Powering up. Speed 100 meg full duplex. 24 volt PoE. Establishing a secure connection. And yes, look at this. So this is uh, AeroS. And the first thing we have to do, just like most Ubiquity products, we have to accept the firmware license agreement, the terms of use. So you can open it up and read it. You probably should at some point. So we'll go back here. We have to put in that default username and password. Please remember to change that. You have to select your country, um, and that is to lock in the different uh, channel settings that are authorized. We are in the United States, and we're going to use English. We're going to log in. So here we go. And it warns us right away, you are using the default administrator password. Please change it in the system page. So before we do anything else, we'll click on System. Yep, we know. And so we are going to click the little key next to that. And we're going to change this to something else. Oop. So we go ahead and choose a different password. And we'll go ahead and click Change down here and then Apply. And out of the box, um, yours may or may not have the newest firmware. This one has 5.6.6, .6, which was the newest firmware. Uh, date is wrong on here, so I'll have to change that. But you get a whole lot of information about what's going on right here. And if we go over to wireless you'll see this is a default mode station and you can change it to an access point or an access point repeater this is where you change the SSID and also the transparent bridge mode uh, if you're trying to use if you're just trying to do like a simple point to point with these you will want to use this WDS transparent bridge mode that way DHCP and things like that won't have any problems passing over the wireless link um, if you have one of these, I suggest you do take a minute and look around. I just wanted you to kind of be familiar with this because we are going to get into some configurations. I'm not going to get into the exact configuration that I'm doing for this client, but I do have the light beam and I do have the nano beam and we are in the next couple of weeks going to be doing some full on configs. So um, real quick, we can launch AirView. We go to the, the wireless or the Ubiquity logo tab, and we can launch AirView. Now, uh, let's see if we can open it from here, see what happens. Yeah, we'll continue. So what uh, AirView is, is we are seeing what is going on in the five gigahertz spectrum. So, for a, I think this CPE is a, between $60 and $80, depending on where you get it. Um, if you do a lot of in-the-field work, a lot of design, just having one of these guys to be able to fire it up and take a look at the spectrum is pretty nice. So check that out. Uh, AirView does come on quite a few of the devices. What else do I want you to know about this guy real quick? What do I want you to know? 
So your network between the radio and the Ethernet that's in this guy. Right now we're in bridge. So you can actually set this guy as up, up as a router. So then you've got WAN, which would be your wireless connection. And then you've got LAN. And then you can also do port forwarding and manipulate the multicast. So you can do you can do all kinds of awesome stuff with this. You can go into advanced mode and get even more options. I mean, these things are just chock full. If I mean, even if you just buy one to throw on the bench to play with it, you're not going to be disappointed. But uh, we're going to use this guy in bridge mode, so we're going to go simple with that. Um, let's get rid of that advanced. There we go. Nice and simple. Is what else? Let's see. Okay, so you can do um, ping watchdog, and what this does is you set an IP address to ping. If this device fails to ping it three times, it will reboot the device. So that's kind of nice when these things are up in the air, you know, out of the way, things like that. You can run SNMP. Here's all of our options. This is all default out of out of the box. You can see uh, device discovery CDP is enabled, um, and I'm assuming that the discovery is LLDP or maybe that's the ubiquity uh, something proprietary. Not 100% sure on that. You can do local logs, remote logging. You get back into the system tab. Uh, I don't believe there's a DNS server set on this. Yeah, so no connection. So if you do have full internet connectivity, you can update the firmware from within the device. So that's pretty nice. Uh, but I don't have a DNS server in there right now. Um, you can change the device name. And um, what else? You can put the latitude longitude in. You can disable the reset button. You can get the support info. You can download a backup of the configuration. You can upload a configuration or you can reset the factory default. So, uh, and then there's some more tools over here. You got the air view, you got the speed test. What else? You got a trace route, ping. Here's your discovery. So you can see there's an edge route or PoE 5 port firmware version. Very nice. Do a site survey. I'm gonna scan all the frequencies. Let's see what it comes up with. Doesn't look like it came up with anything. Uh, then you can do the antenna alignment. So check it out. Like I said, it's the uh, Nano Beam M5 from Ubiquity Networks and. You know, very useful, very robust, powerful device. Fits in the palm of your hand and is less than 100 bucks. So if you like the video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe, comment, and share, and we'll see you at the next video.